Marker in here. Marker storyteller. We go zoom deep into the atmosphere of the planet. In a largely unpopulated planet, there are a few natives that have villages in the south, but in the north, in the mountains. A secret base, built years ago. A misanthrope lives inside. A single alien by the name of... Trog... Trog Masterson. The most famous author in the galaxy. He sits, wakes up, and flips a few switches as the entire wall of his mountain villa turns into a window. And he watches as the, the fucking lightning cracks on a mountain across the way, but he's safe, he's fine, sequestered away in his fucking mountain home. And he sips his space whiskey. You see, Trog Masterson used to be a big shot. In fact, like I said, he was the most famous author in the entire galaxy. Made trillions off of his books and stories. And yet, one thing he never accomplished was finding peace. Yes, yes, he had lived a life that normal people could ne'er even dream of. Floating in a nebula, fucking, fucking aliens of all types and shapes, busting inside of a cloud of gas and inhaling its essence and getting fucking high and having tripping and fucking having amazing ego death experiences as he rakes in the cash from his multiple book deals and movie deals and fucking invests it in cryptocurrency and, and, and fucking to experiencing every sort of pleasure in the known galaxy. And yet, still, here he was, at the end of his days, a long life of 350 years, and now he lives alone in a mountain villa, sipping his space whiskey, watching as an avalanche overtakes a small village on the other side of the mountain, and feeling nothing. He thought about his family that he had once. <laughs> that was another life. He saw his daughter being born by that same gas cloud that he had busted inside. A gaseous creature. But he knew he could see in her eyes. Love. Some sort of naive sense of wholesomeness had filled him that day. Even though he knew that life was meaningless, that this child would grow to be fucking dead inside, just like him. He had left the planet that day and soared through the galaxy for years, alone in his spaceship with just his companion, his robot companion, M Martha. M4RTA Martha where he had drifted through space for 50 years alone with just Martha He remembers he had seen the beginning of up and he didn't even cry He didn't even cry at the opening scene of up what had happened to him And as he sat in his mountain villa, sipping space whiskey, he felt something he hadn't felt in a long time. The wetness of tears on his face, and he reaches up. And he sees he's crying. Where had it all gone wrong? You see, stories are like currency. In fact, they're more than currency. A living being can structure their entire narrative of reality based purely on fictional stories. Even if they've never seen a creature across the galaxy, they can experience empathy and feel for that being through a story. And once he thought 
that he would make the galaxy a better place. And still, as his stories of peace and love went throughout the galaxy, he saw as wars tore apart, planets killed millions, and nothing changed. He was just as helpless as a speck of sand on a beach, being swept up into the ocean. And he stopped trying at one point. He stopped trying to make a difference. He grew jaded and old. He just took the money. He remembers in his 130th year writing a book on, a war, on the war-torn planet of Akralos. As civil war tore the planet apart, the corporations that were, were fucking taking over the planet, winning the war, burrowing deep into the planet and taking out the fucking energy of the core. Akralos was dying, and yet he had stayed there until the planet's last hours to witness something, something, anything that would make him feel alive. He saw as the cracks began to form, as he, as the last transport left the planet, as the corporations got their way and tore the planet asunder. And he watched from his spaceship as the many fucking warships of Cat Hacks Co. descended upon the world, ripping its crust apart. Fucking Amazon, Cat Hacks Co. That's in canon. I've written stories about Cat Hacks Co. You're gonna learn more about Cat Hacks Co. going forward. And he remembers Martha, his robot companion, had said something to him in that moment that had stuck with him to this day. She didn't even know what she was saying, but she said to him, <laughs> she said to him, Sir, what is it all for? He didn't know. And at that moment, he couldn't see a difference between himself and those corporate bastards. And so he joined the rebellion. At 140 years old, he joined the resistance against Cadhax Co. and fought throughout multiple systems gaining friends and companions, watching them die, and still, when he held the CEO of Cadhax Co. in his hands, tor choking the fucking light out of him, he still couldn't see the point, and he let him go. The death of Acrylos had sparked something in the galaxy, and yet, even as Cadhax Co. was overthrown, a new corporation rose and filled the power vacuum. You see, nothing changes. And as he sat there at the end of time, sipping his space whiskey, he knew his death was near. He looked at a moving picture of his gas daughter. and enhanced the image so that was filling up the entire fucking VR window. And he remembered her death. It was his 250th year. He was never a good father, but he had decided that this year, he would try harder. And he traveled to her home planet of Simtepelon 15. Brought her a gift, something his own mother had given to him on her deathbed. 
an old copy of an old, old movie that they loved. An old movie from the planet Earth long ago. The planet of humans that killed each other. But there was one movie that survived. One movie that still the galaxy loved. That movie was called Shallow Hal, starring Jack Black. A movie about a man who thought he was dating a hot chick and it turned out she was huge and obese, but he didn't even care at the end because he learned to love someone other than himself, to love someone not based on their appearance. Appearance, that's not a word, but he, he knew that maybe he could bond with his daughter over this wholesome message. But when he got there to the planet, he learned he was too late. And she had become a nebula. In the stars. And so he traveled there with Martha. And watched. As his daughter, no longer capable of speech, floated through the cosmos. And wondered, is she happy? Susan, I love you. And he wondered, could this be my fate? Would this be better than living in this prison of flesh? What have I learned after 250 years of life? All that I've learned was that I'd rather be a fucking cloud floating through space. Is Susan watching? I think she is. I don't know. But he stared and wondered what his daughter was thinking. And so he created a fucking machine. A great machine to read the thoughts of nebulas and space clouds. He used all his riches to hire the most smart, nerdy fucking scientists to create a grand machine, a machine that could read the thoughts of nebulas and they finished their work as he reached the ripe age of 300 and he returned to that cloud. What's up, Dodan? What's up? How's it going? And as he switched on the machine, what's up, bash him up, Barbie? How welcome, welcome back. As he switched on the machine, he read his daughter's thoughts. As she floated through space, all she thought of, play the birthday song? What the, I'm in the middle of a fucking, okay, you wanna hear the birthday song? That's cool, you interrupted my story, but we're fucking pogging out anyway. It's gonna be great because I'm about to give me uh, some time to think about shit. We're thinking about some shit that I could use in the fucking story, so thank you for the time that I can use to stall so I can think about whatever his daughter said in space or whatever the fuck I am talking about. I don't even know what the fuck I'm saying, but it is cool and I like it. So we're gonna fucking. This is what she was thinking about. <laughs> she was just thinking about this song. She had heard this song like once when she was young and she watched like a Twitch streamer and he played this song and it got stuck in her head. And as she floated through co the cosmos for fucking thousands, millions of years, this song was just playing on a loop over and over again. And she was like, is Felder gonna stream tonight? Is he gonna tell stories tonight? Is he gonna be fucking insecure and weird? Or is he gonna be the best version of himself which we've grown accustomed to seeing? It goes on and on, that's right. And he sat there fucking listening to the music and he was like, this is it? This is the grand profound fucking thoughts that she's having as a nebula that's floating through space? Is this it? Is this all there is? What is the point of life? If that's how it's gonna go, you just hear the celebration song over and over again by Otis McDonald. Go ahead and check out Otis McDonald on stream. It's gonna be fucking great. 
Go ahead and check out his YouTube channel. That's what she was thinking about. And at that moment, he knew there was nothing in this whole wide universe that could bring, bring him happiness. Although his stories had brought so much joy to the entire galaxy, he knew that it was all dirt and ash in his mouth. All the money, the fame, the respect, the love, the fucking busting he got to do because of his talents, none of it mattered. He couldn't share it with anyone. Besides Martha. And she was just a robot. His family was gone, estranged after years. He tried to speak to them, tried to send messages, but no responses came. And so he drifted. Drifted. Until he grew old. And he found a backwater planet full of villages and people just living their lives, agricultural folk. And he built, he transformed his ship into a house that sat on the mountaintop. And there he sat, sipping space whiskey. At the end of time, as he watched the sun explode, this solar system sun fucking go supernova. And as the solar flare swept the earth and killed thousands, he watched and he thought to himself, let them take me. Let it take me. Let the sun wash over me and wipe me clean of life. I've had it with living. I've given my soul to the world. I've fought for freedom! I've told stories that brought dictators to tears and spurred thousands to action. I've told stories that brought a child to sleep at night, and yet none of it, none of it matters. And he started to cry as the planet was torn asunder and his ship's shields failed and the hole started to melt. And Martha looked over at him as her circuitry faded and she was blown apart by the force of the sun exploding. And he accepted his fate. And finally, the peace of death And there was nothing. And then he awoke. What was this? He tried to look around and found that his eyes were no longer there, but something remained. His spirit had become imbued with the fucking space dust that went inside of his penis when he busted inside of the gas giant. He had somehow absorbed some of their DNA and he had become a nebula floating in space just like his daughter. And finally, beyond death, he felt something, something at last. And it was this, 
And then he floated through space for like millions of years And this was the song he heard the entire time As he was fucking floating all through space And everything was great And he reconnected with his daughter Because they could talk to each other With fucking, uh, it was like, you know They could talk to each other Because they were both nebulas And then he watched some shit happen They watched Shallow Hal together again And it was all fucking pog as shit And he found peace in the afterlife after all what's said and done we can only be for each other that we could i don't know i don't know what i was trying to say there but it was fucking sick and everyone had a good time and it was fucking cool as fuck and everyone had a lot of fun and they all got drunk and okay that's the story that's number one that's one down baby that's fucking one down marker end of storyteller